With all the hair in place, I'm going to lay over a layer of cotton. I've got my muslin with center references marked. I'm going to lay that out over the padding. Now I'm going to pull that down tight over the top and give this a pretty aggressive pulling down over the top corner here along this center. Again, we'll have to adjust these. I've rolled under the hair along this edge and made a release cut directly into the center of the arm. Separate this cotton here. I'm going to shoot a cut right down in here towards the center. Then I need to work this material down in here and establish our cut along the back rail. With my cuts made into the front rail there, I'm going to trim away these flaps here and get these out of the way. With the lower rail all evenly dressed out, I'll open up this area under the arm here. Clean that up right there. Then I want to adjust this just a little bit more over the top edge here. Okay, with this muslin trimmed away, we're ready to cut leather. I mentioned earlier I would explain why the muslin needs to be tacked high on the rail. The edge roll holds the leather out from the face of the frame. By stapling up here, you're leaving that area in a void. I made center references on the leather and I've stapled the, the hide at the front and back rail. Rolled the leather over to the edge, snugged it. I'm making the release cuts here. Okay, with the leather fit around the arm there, I'm going to snug the leather back towards this corner post here. Snug it up and then make our release cut into it. Leaving this out a little bit here and snug it down and put a temporary shot here. We'll do this to the other arm. Use your palm and rub the leather snug.
just a little bit of an adjustment to make here on this fold right here. Might have to make a little bit more of a, an adjustment on the cut. back leg and we'll dress it out. Okay, with the sides all pretty well closed out, I'm going to pull this temporary shot out of here, rub this and snug everything up a little bit. I'll give this leather a brisk rubbing towards the front and work it towards the outer corners. I'm going to shoot a few temporary shots in here just to keep it keep it snugged up. I need to work this out over the corner here. I'm going to get a Pinch right down here in the corner where this rail meets the leg. Snip up close to that. This will probably get adjusted. Sometimes it might stretch, the weather might stretch. Stretch this leather around the corner here. Maybe bump down this edge roll just a little bit. Like that. Start cutting up right towards this corner here, and I'll stop short and allow the material to fold in. With the corners roughed in, now it's just a matter of working the leather down and work towards these corners. Okay, stop a couple inches short here because we'll have to readjust these folds. few adjustments in this cut here. I've trimmed it back to uh, oh, just a little over half, three quarters of an inch there. Three quarters. My original staple marks about split in half. About rolled under. These legs are trimmed off with the raw edge here. So I've taken a small steel straight edge I'm going to cut away on this leather, trying to not get too deep with it. I started by stapling the leather at both of my center points. Stop about an inch back and do some adjusting before I make this little diagonal cut. And that looks good. Put a temporary shot right there. Dress away some of this excess along the inner leg there.
I'm going to work the slack out of the leather and stretch it up over the corner here. Put a temporary shot on the edge there and work this stuff into place. As I work around this corner here, I'm trying to work this leather as smooth as I can. There's times that you can get leather to lay out smooth and no wrinkles, and then there's times you just have to accept a few gathers. The most important thing to watch for if you're making these gathers is that you keep them at a 90 degree angle to the frame. If you get folds that, that splay off, they just don't look right. For the sake of making demonstration easier, I'm just going to work on making a small piece of gimp. I need a good straight edge here, so I'm going to start by making marks there. And I'm going to spray the back with two coats of 3M77 adhesive. Spray that on there and let that dry a little bit and then recoat it. I'll start up here on this end and we'll roll these back. After you're done with that, it's a good idea to take a roller and press that all down. I'm working on these chairs by the dozen, so I'm making a cardboard template to make the uh, tack placement much easier. Stretch this out a little bit and trim the end here. template. The remaining holes here. These are mostly decorative tacks around here with the exception of these right up here where that muslin wants to ride out a little bit. When I'm trimming out the front rail, I drive these tacks on the corners down just to the point of holding, my, holding the template in place. That way I don't need to take a pen and mark every slot. I can just work along this way. As you drive these nails down, you'll find that some of them need to have some adjustments. So you can take a wooden block and bump them into place. Well, I'm going to close up the bottom of this chair with our cambric and call this job a wrap.
It's a good idea not to overstretch the cambric when you apply it. Webbing will relax and, and stretch out and if you stretch your cambric too tightly it'll uh, cause it to tear out in the seams as it stretches here.